Hey guys, I'm Doug. And I'm Theo. And last week, you may have watched a video where I talked about screwing up my ACL and then being afraid to actually deal with it and then sucking it up, talking to Theo and going to a doctor and getting it taken care of. And today, we're gonna talk about what my expectations were and as in the last video versus what reality has been of recovery. I was pretty afraid of surgery and being awake while I was getting, you know, cut on. I mean, not because I haven't had people mess with me, but just the idea of having them cutting bone and tendon and whatever else. And I was like, I don't wanna be awake for this. And no one really told me what that was gonna be like. At least in my surgery, I went to sleep. I thought I was a giraffe. I woke up afterwards and was like, they were like, get out of the bed and walk out of here on these crutches. And I was like, But my oh. head doesn't fit through the door. <laughs> it's like, okay, <laughs> yeah, like, this is great. I, it was a really good experience for the surgical team. Surgeons are all dicks, so there's that. You know, like, <laughs> luckily, I'm not inviting him over to my house for dinner, but he was a very competent surgeon who does a lot of, like, athletic repairs. Either way, like, we came out of surgery. The biggest thing was I had convinced myself that it was an outpatient surgery and I'd be able to take care of myself. Just having come out of a divorce, I was adamant about taking care of myself. That was a very foolish move on my part. Luckily, I called a friend. I, for the first week after surgery, like no matter how well-intentioned I was about taking care of myself, I needed somebody around. Uh, the swelling just got way too bad anytime I was on my feet at mm -hmm. all. So having somebody around post-surgery, it's a great idea. Preferably someone who's like actually good at helping. As mm -hmm. opposed to like, if you brought somebody in who isn't very good at helping and doesn't want to do things like <laughs> of their own initiative, it may be more stressful than actually having nobody. I don't know, but it was, I got pretty lucky. Yeah. I was really afraid that the recovery process was going to be awful <laughs> and a weekend you know it's like kind of taking the brace off to sleep the pain subsiding the swelling's getting a little bit better um range of motion was not good mm -hmm. but going through the basic mobility exercises that the pt gave me um we started pt day two yep like, as you should yeah you know, surgery happened and i was in the pt's office and i mean i think i was still a little loopy and i was like I guess we're gonna do this. And it was just a lot of pain. I had never thought that laying on a table would get me sweating so much, <laughs> but it wasn't unbearable pain. It was just getting things going. I think yeah. the thing that was the most shocking to me was due to the harvest and the repair, like I couldn't move my leg anymore. I was, my hips still work, but my glutes almost atrophied a little bit from lack of use, my left glute, not my right one. So like I had like a donkey butt right side and like mm -hmm. 80 year old man ass on the left. And I was like, just, my leg was locked out and everything was me just swinging. Yeah, using the other yeah, leg. Yeah, a dead weight around. <clears throat> yeah. And I didn't realize even getting back into physical therapy so quickly, mm -hmm. how much I would lose. Like when the doctor in the previous video told me, you're gonna lose all this, he was not that far off. <laughs> My yeah. muscles atrophied pretty dramatically in just two days. Yeah. And then we launched into a whole variety of techniques to try to get my muscles firing again which I mean, there was no amount of like my brain, I'm like work mm -hmm. and it's not doing it. But no. we used electrical stimulation, massage, grass, that are like the hooks, the grass and hawk or whatever it is. It's, it's instrument assisted. Yeah, yeah. instrument assisted scraping. Mm -hmm. But all of those things together combined with like a physical therapy program. I mean, we're five weeks post-surgery. I feel good. Um, healing really quickly. A lot of collagen supplements. I don't know if it's working or not, but I drink it mm -hmm. with vitamin C. Yep. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. As, as I was told you're by sleeping. a wise curly haired fuck. <laughs> and you're sleeping, you're getting your eight hours. Nine every night. Yep. Yeah. Post-surgery, it wasn't even a question. It was like 12 hours of sleep yeah. and like I'd get up and Corey would right. be like, hey, do you want to eat? And I'm like, I, yeah, I guess so. He'd, like, fix, <laughs> he'd fix me breakfast and I'd be like just sitting on the couch exhausted from just getting up, moving to the couch. Yeah. eating and I'm just like, oh, I should take a nap again, <laughs> you yeah. know, like, but that was a couple weeks of that yep. more than I expected. Yeah. And then getting back in the groove. I think that the hardest part is realizing that the swelling, like the initial swelling almost made me feel like I had had no atrophy at all because <laughs> my yeah, leg yeah. was just so fat. Yeah. And then as that started to go down, I started to realize that the swelling was still there, but it was a lot harder for me to control. Yep. It is clearly swollen mm -hmm. and I can't quite get this to fire yep. the way I'm supposed to because yep. I have and, too much swelling. And that's swelling because this isn't firing. So there's instability and this micro movement creates swelling. You know, you're still healing. 
the swelling's normal. It, it's it's unfortunate that you know it, it is so debilitating. It's just the way our body works. If you're not using a range of motion, if you're not using a muscle, you know we we lose it. So your body just starts to get rid of it. You know your body releases certain proteins that can create catabolic responses. And you know if we can get you into rehab sooner and start that process of kind of pumping that break and, and even just like slowing that down. It makes a big difference when it is time to start putting more weight on it, start to walk normal, transitioning away from protocols and into, okay, like it's time to go, let's start to strengthen this thing. You know, we're still not dealing with, oh, you still have like lack of full range of motion. You can't even fire your quad. So yeah, like any surgery, the first few days, especially it's trauma. I mean, that's why he's under is because it's, nobody's gonna be able to tolerate that. And you can't compare an ACL repair to a rotator cuff repair to like a lumbar fusion. Like they're all different. You know, ACLs are not comfortable, but they're one of the protocols where you can start to do some things right away. And, you know, like you can weight bear, you can start to try to strengthen it. You can start to do like range of motion. Um, Somebody texted me and told me the more weight bearing work I can do, the faster I'll heal. I'm not going to say who said that. Does that sound like something? Yeah, that's <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> so, but here's, and, and here's the catch though. You have to make sure, you know, if he, if he has that much swelling and he visually knows he can, he can see his quad is not firing walking with crutches because, you know, if somebody comes in and they come into the clinic and they're peg leg and, and I mean, it's a hard lean and they're arching their back, they're locking things out because they can't fire their quads. Like that's not it use the support, but that weight bearing is what allows all the muscles to co-contract. They start to fire, they start to learn how to stabilize the knee, which can change if it's a different procedure. But if it's just ACL, we know under controlled environments, that's it's a great, it's a great rehab tool because you're training your body now to start loading. My health insurance provided physical therapist who I actually really like, I told him this week that I went and did a bunch of hiking on the Appalachian Trail with my kid, which kind of happened, like I kind of got guilted into it. All the camping sites were full. We were there. What are we going to do? Well, I know this spot we got to hike into and I brought bags. Let's do it. And so like all the camping gear, multiple trips in, like set up camp. And I was really conscious of the instability of my knee, mm -hmm. under, especially under load over super uneven terrain. So I was like very slow, very like intentional about how I was taking every, <laughs> every uneven step. In my head, I kept thinking I was gonna like fall over. I'm like, man, I'm gonna fall over. I'm gonna rip this thing. So I'm the dumbest person ever. It didn't happen. But what was weird is after all that hiking and load bearing, I would have expected, I mean, I had some swelling. I would have expected to be in pain, mm -hmm. but I could hear the scar tissue and feel it breaking up in my knee. And then when I got out from under load and was walking around, I was like, oh dude, finally my knees like releasing and moving more naturally. Mm -hmm. So like that whole experience, I felt like I accelerated the healing process afterwards, even though the process itself was like super questionable and I probably shouldn't have done it. Yeah, I don't think the hike broke through that plateau. I think you're lucky. I mean, it's that does a lot of weight, uneven terrain. I think you definitely move, like you move through range of motion, but how did he react when you told him that? Uh, he goes, well, I wouldn't have prescribed that. Yeah, but so, uh, <laughs> he was like, I wouldn't have guy. prescribed that, but uh, like, I'm yeah. glad that you're not broken. Like yeah. he spent an extra amount of time kind of like, sure. Good playing with him. it to make sure yeah. that I hadn't done any damage, which was good because yeah. I was more worried about when my Labrador Retriever ran with her skull right into my kneecap yeah. the day before PT. I was like, man, I think she might have like actually done something like cracked my kneecap. It was like yeah. painful. He's like, no, I think you just bruised it. I'm like, hmm, good. Yeah. I have been glad to get range of motion back to be able to move, but I know like I can't run. I'm not mm -hmm. even going to try. No. But cycling on a trainer has been good, which didn't happen quickly. The whole having to rock oh, yeah. the crank to oh, yeah. get a full rotation yep. was like really disconcerting to realize that I used to be just like free spinning. And then once I did break the range of motion, mm -hmm. putting load on it became harder. Like I could push, but not pull like mm -hmm. through the full range. So I was like, Ooh, <laughs> we're yeah. just gonna ride it. It's been really encouraging. I've never yeah. done anything where every day I wake up and I feel like I'm breaking another barrier, mm -hmm. but post-surgery, the pain wasn't as bad as I expected it to be, honestly. There were mm -hmm. times where it was really bad because it's constant, but in general, it was not awful. Um, movement was the real problem. Yeah, you know, Range of motion and movement. But I mean, almost every day I wake up and there's something I can do that I couldn't do before mm -hmm. just because, you know, calf raises in the shower, like, mm -hmm. look, oh look, I can just step in here now instead of yeah. this like, <laughs> you yeah. know, crazy thing. Yeah, I mean, you have to protect it 
a lot <clears throat> in the first phase it's it is letting that graph actually tack down letting that stabilize which is a much longer period than just like me feeling better yeah. doesn't mean that my graph is tacked nope. down not at all and that's where it's this difference in you know if you're not moving and you're sitting there you're you're building this sensitivity like your whole nervous system your brain is starting to become overly sensitive so that's why it's important to kind of get up and move but then even that you have to scale that because if you move too much, gravity is going to force the swelling down. So it is this game back and forth and everybody's going to be different, but that initial protective phase is what allows you to hit the next phase in stride. And then you can start to just build on that. And then before you know it, you're like, oh my gosh, like six months went by, like I'm feeling really good. When so, they said it was a six month recovery, <clears throat> I was like, dude, get the fuck out of here. Like yeah. six months is crazy. Yeah, I mean, seven to nine, it's, it's really like a, to get back to like real deal, high level, it's, yeah, you know, it's expected, but can't push it. You can't force it. There, there, there have been plenty of studies to try to push like accelerated ACLs and then the less like the slow and what they find is the accelerated gets there quicker, but then there's this kind of stall. And then by the time this catches up, everybody's kind of moving at the same pace. So, um, it is really just for the, the tissue protection. Yeah. I mean, you get better you just have to be patient and though like that time's going to pass anyway, you just have to do what you need to do and, and be smart about it. Like listen to your doc, listen to the surgeon. So in a lot of our previous videos, Theo and I have talked about how gimmicky certain niche adjunct therapies are, like certain things that you see a lot of guys who are featured in CrossFit using uh, on a day-to-day -day basis and how it doesn't actually do that much for you, like from a grand standpoint. But if you're interested to hear how those things do work, we'll be doing a video talking about those adjunct therapy treatments as they apply to rehab post-injury and how they're actually much more useful in that realm than they are in terms of like just athletic performance. So click subscribe, ring the bell, and stay tuned for the next video where we talk about that.